Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponderon Weather here. We've got big changes ahead, so we're gonna get right to it and delve into the details and start off with the upper level jet coming up on Wednesday. And you can see the last dip up here in the Pacific Northwest, trending into Northern California. That is the last of the parade of storms that area has been dealing with for about three weeks. But at the same time, we see a massive dip here as well as in, in the middle of the country. That's going to create all that instability in the warm sector out ahead of it. But to the northwest of there, we've got a formidable low pressure. We've got heavy snows are going to be breaking out into portions of uh, Colorado as well as into Nebraska. There's your overall hazard index with that trough coming in. We've got heavy snow is going to be flying into the Flagstaff area and portions of New Mexico. But it's really going to be picking up an intensification with newly winter storm warnings in the heart of the Denver Metroplex, extending into portions of Nebraska, heading into portions of Iowa, getting all the way up into Wisconsin. You can see to the southern flank of there, that's actually dense fog advisors. That just gives you an indication. This air mass is plenty warm with and plenty of high dew points going to be tapping into with that low level jet and those record high temperatures in fact for today we've actually got up, up to about 17 record high temperatures plenty of widespread upper 70s if not 80s we could be approaching almost 90 degrees down there in deep south texas but there are changes going to be filtering in on the back side as we're going to be making a transition to colder temperatures but then much colder temperatures definitely enter the picture by the time we head into next week so hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns on north america hit the subscribe button and you're in you get all my daily content on this channel it's also important to hit the like button as well it definitely helps out more than you know so i appreciate everybody that participated in the tempest giveaway yesterday so we're going to be going announcing the winner right now we've actually had over 1430 comments that commented the keyword tempest and i took a random drawing about 10 o'clock this morning and the winner is random hero so random hero if you're out there definitely email me at ponderonweather at gmail.com. I need your address and your phone number to get this out to you to ship it out as soon as possible. So definitely uh, email me because you are the winner of the Tempest Weather Station. So let's really delve into the details because we've got a significant winter storm that's really going to be building up there in uh, Colorado with newly winter storm warnings and in fact they've actually amplified and increased the snow amounts anywhere from 6 to 13 inches in these areas so we've got very heavy snows are going to be blanking you know blanketing the that area in fact let's look at the top 10 all-time snows for the Denver Metroplex so if they get anywhere from that 6 to 13 inches we could be, you know, pressing upwards to that, you know, all time or even the second or third highest totals in the month of January. So this is definitely a significant storm going to be breaking out uh, for them. But in the south side, like I mentioned, we've got to be concerned about more severe weather. This is going to be your third week in a row. We've been dealing with those severe storms. So definitely be on high alert as we get deeper into the afternoon hour. Starts off in East Texas, but really amplifies and heads over portions of Louisiana and Mississippi, getting into portions of Western Tennessee. We are going to have uh, tornadoes with this as well. I don't think it's as huge as outbreak as what we had last week, but definitely a lot of these same areas are going to be under a gun again with potentially larger hail and those damaging winds as well. So definitely be on high alert down there into the southeast but over the next 48 hours we've got a lot of very heavy rain so this is an indication of these darker reds of these very amplified heavier thunderstorms in this area so we've got the severe weather on the south side but then training supercell thunderstorms could be looking at two to four inches in these these areas we have the last gasp of that uh, you know tropical you know pacific system that comes in for the pacific northwest i think after this the the taps definitely shut off once we get beyond wednesday with the into the pacific northwest but there's your snow that's going to be falling in the cold sector on the northwest side so we mentioned anywhere from 6 to 13 inches in this particular swath 
but I think you could even have some isolated amounts even higher than that once you head into portions of Nebraska, a little bit lower once you head into portions of Iowa, getting into Minnesota as it really you know goes into portions of Wisconsin, and then a little bit lighter amounts as you see there's not much to speak of down there into the Mid-Atlantic, but once you get into some of these higher elevations into Vermont and New Hampshire back into Maine, easily four to six, some t- you know in areas eight to ten inches of snow for them but we do have big changes this is going to be a big change in the weather pattern that we've been dealing with really for the last three weeks because much of the country has actually been experiencing well above average temperature anomalies it's really because this really amplified pacific flow more of a zonal flow and that's why california just got crushed for the last three weeks now that changes so that's going to be pretty significant because we've had plenty of cold air building up in siberia and that is start is going to start to ooze down and start filtering down into the lower 48 at the same time we see ridging start to build back up into alaska again that's going to set the trough underneath and as it continues this is going to be more amplified dragging down a little bit more of that colder air but it's also going to be increasing a lot of the instability much further south as well so you can take a look at the temperature anomalies by the time we get into your monday the 23rd time frame going into next week those are well above you know well below average temperatures building building out west as we start transforming into more of a cross polar flow versus more of a zonal flow so that is definitely huge something we haven't seen in really in the last three weeks so this is definitely a game changer for winter going forward because i think this will just continue to be amplified the deeper we get into january so yeah by tuesday that's also going to bring the snow line as well further south so places into oklahoma we could be looking at moderate to even potentially heavy snows for them back into the texas panhandle swinging into portions of you know portions of eastern new mexico these areas have been bone dry so even you know to see in any precipitation in these areas you have not seen much really in the last 30 days so this is significant you know change and altering you know the weather pattern that we've seen you know really over the last three weeks so and again the deeper we get into next week and the more ridging that starts to build up into alaska that cold air continues to funnel south and it just gets trapped into the lower 48 so it basically starts out west and then it slowly moves east as we get deeper into next week and it gets a little bit colder each time at the same time we've seen a a significant change in the soi index this is your southern oscillation kind of your jet stream on the southern flank of there it's been well <laughs> plenty you know plenty of these high numbers and that's why the taps have been shut off for the southern jet stream but now that the situation has changed we've seen some of this you know dip in the overall soi index that's a, basically a leading indicator as the cold air continues to press it'll have an active subtropical jet stream to tap into so if we look at that jet stream heading into middle of next week that's a significant difference versus what we've seen of late the last three weeks of that zonal flow now we have more of that cross polar flow so as the cold air continues to press south and press eastbound we do have an active subtropical jet it's going to be able to tap into so that just tells you an indication these areas are going to be more susceptible to seeing not only rain but cold enough to mix in with wintery precipitation at times as well so we definitely be will be looking at this very active you know jet that's going to be coming starting basically by the middle of next week and really amplifying as we head into next weekend there is your latest climate prediction center if you've noticed this has gotten colder with every update for the last five or six days so yeah going back you know going into next week we see these darker blues really start to take over and they start to trend further and further east and that's the building setup of the, the you know the trough really big and digging in you know you know amplifying over this area and that continues to trend further and further east as we get deeper into the week and with the active subtropical jet that places more moisture at the same time cold air presses southbound as well so these areas 
you know, could be looking at above average precipitation, you know, heading in, heading into next week. And then there's your colder air continuing to press. So this kind of gives you an idea by Wednesday morning, as the colder air will continue to be amplified, we're talking negative numbers where all the snow is going to be flying. We're going to have a healthy snowpack on the ground. A lot of these areas in, in and around the Denver area and around Colorado could be below zero in, in, in t actual temperatures as that cold air continues to press into New Mexico, continues to press a little bit further southeast. There's the overall temperatures, you know, for Wednesday morning back into the teens and potentially Oklahoma area. And that will eventually continue to build and shift further east as we get deeper into next week and as we do that with the active subtropical jet and as the cold air presses with the cross polar flow that definitely puts the snow line further south so a lot of these areas like the ohio valley back into missouri portions of oklahoma portions of texas panhandle that you really haven't seen much snow at all so far this winter that's going to be the game changer so now you're going to be start getting into the action of seeing some of that snowfall and that will just creep up into the tennessee valley getting up into the ohio valley and then yes heading up into the mid-atlantic and even you guys in portions of say new york city where you're just counting the days that you have not seen snowfall i think that streak will finally end <laughs> by the time we get into next weekend so you know hold on you know winter's coming but it's it's going to be a, about another week and then next week it's really going to be a step down process with much colder conditions and bare, you know snowier conditions as well that was the latest gps gfs and this is the latest eps guidance kind of implying the same thing putting the snow line much further south so this is a you know a pretty significant storm to have some snow further south in the southern regions and then building across the Ohio Valley and getting it into the portions of the mid-Atlantic and heading into the northeast so hey guys I appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me in the next update why I protect you before and after storm